<clears throat> the Federal Reserve, as widely expected, widely held, it's the most telegraphed punch in the history of boxing, the Federal Reserve on Wednesday achieved liftoff. We've gone from a uh, quarter percent uh, Fed funds rate, it's the overnight cost of money, to a half percent. Prime is up a quarter point, as it will move mechanically with every future Fed tighten. The indices for adjustable rate mortgages also will move up. The most widespread error in the press is to say the Fed raised rates today. No, it did not. The Fed directly controls only one interest rate. It's called the Fed Funds Rate, and it's the overnight cost of money between banks. That's it. The Fed only twice in its 103-year history has attempted to manipulate long-term rates, and it has, and at both times to keep them down. First time between World War II and Korea, the second time quantitative easing. So when the Fed moves, it raises rate, its own rate, and all the other rates move by inference. In the aftermath of the first rate hike, the idea for uh, Fed junkies like me is to watch markets all over the place and see what moved. Long-term rates, mortgage rates, actually went down since, since Wednesday morning. Not much, but a hair. In a completely bizarre accident, the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note, which is the definitive long-term cost of money benchmark all over the world, is exactly the same today as it was a year ago. We needn't have paid attention at all this year. It's the same. The Fed has more of this to do, uh, but still, yesterday and today, the stock market had bad days. The stock market had a good day the day the Fed hiked. doesn't mean much. What does matter is oil went down in price. Natural gas went down in price. Copper went down in price. Gold went down in price. Every inflation asset went down because if the Fed intends to fight inflation, then presumably there won't be any. But all of those assets also went down in price because most trade in global markets in dollars. And if the Fed is going to raise the cost of money in dollars, then the dollar is going to become more valuable and it's worth taking a risk to buy oil and gas and so on denominated in dollars because the dollar is going to go up in value even if in the long run oil doesn't go down anymore. All that's gobbledygook, I know, but the, when the Fed begins a tightening cycle, which it did on Wednesday, the usual reaction is everything gets hurt. This is the first time I've been able to find, and I spent part of this morning trying to find, the beginning of any Fed cycle since the Fed began them, in which markets responded the way that they have in the last 72 hours. It's never happened before. Not once. When the Fed ooches up the short-term cost of money and long-term money goes down, um, that's what's supposed to happen at the end of the cycle, and it's the last thing that happens before we have a recession. I'm not predicting one. It's Christmas. That's an impolite thing to do. And I don't mean to say that the Fed doesn't know what it's doing, even though it's on the thinnest of ice and it's walking out from shore. The, the, the patterns in the marketplace say that for the, for the foreseeable future, which is at least a week, we don't have anything to worry about with mortgage rates. And maybe longer than that, maybe clearer into next year. Very strange pattern. Fed ooching up short-term things. Home equity lines of credit are going to get more expensive. Adjustable rate mortgages are going to get more expensive. The stock market may have a hard time, but in our part, housing, mortgages, Merry Christmas.